There's a lot of concern about dental amalgam and its uh, mercury content because mercury is a highly potent neurotoxin and in this presentation I will shed some light on the most important aspects of dental amalgam. My name is Dr. Dirk Jacobson from dentaldecoded.com. I will explain what makes dental amalgam toxic and why it frequently cracks teeth and also how it is safely removed and what the replacement options are. Dental amalgam consists of 50% liquid mercury and that is mixed with 50% of a metal powder. It's mixed in a capsule and it turns into a paste. This paste gets put into the cavity of teeth and the dentist carves it into the right shape. Then it hardens for about 48 hours. The filling material is a mixture of 50% mercury plus 50% of a metal powder consisting of silver, tin, copper, zinc and other trace metals. Mercury is highly toxic. It's a potent neurotoxin. It is destructive to nerve cells like our brain cells. Mercury is not locked within the filling. Instead, the filling is constantly releasing small amounts of mercury in form of a vapor. Once the vapor is inhaled, 80% of that vapor is instantly absorbed by the lungs into the bloodstream and then it accumulates throughout the body. Wherever mercury arrives, it is locked into the tissue. From here, it is very hard to get it out of the system again. It is not so much the amalgam filling itself that is the problem, but the constant vapor release. Let's look at some indisputable basic facts about mercury. Mercury is the most poisonous, non-radioactive, naturally occurring substance on Earth. Amalgam fillings continuously release mercury vapor. Heat, like from a hot drink, will increase the vapor release. Mercury passes through the placenta to the fetus. Mercury is extraordinarily toxic to the fetus and the nursing baby. There are over 100 symptoms and diseases related to chronic mercury poisoning. And this is what the health authorities have to say regarding mercury. The World Health Organization says there is no safe or harmless level of mercury. The American Dental Association claims that amalgam fillings are completely safe because only very small amounts of mercury gets released. This is a contradiction. It can't be both ways. Something doesn't add up. There's overwhelming evidence that small amounts of mercury are continuously released as mercury vapor, which is highly toxic. But still, the use of dental amalgam is standard procedure and it gets put into teeth just an inch away from the brain. Apart from the toxicology of the mercury within the dental amalgam, there's another problem with the filling material and it's related to its physical properties, which makes it an inferior filling material compared to modern alternatives. The teeth in the picture have old amalgam fillings and are structurally damaged. The problem with amalgam is that it oxidizes, it leaks mercury and it expands at the same time. So there's a lot of internal stress. Just like in a thermometer, mercury within the amalgam filling expands and contracts with temperature changes. That puts additional stress on the remaining tooth structure. And because it does not bond to the tooth, the filling material does not bond, it just sits in the tooth. When chewing on a tooth like that, it can lead to fractures in the remaining tooth. Here, for example, where a complete wall has broken off. I saw a patient with an old amalgam filling. The patient couldn't chew properly because it was hurting every time he was biting down on the fragile cusp between the yellow arrows. The old mercury amalgam filling is expanding from the inside out. I just call it amalgam overgrowth. It's causing pressure against the thin remaining cusp. Once I removed the amalgam filling, we can clearly see a crack. The patient couldn't chew properly because it was hurting every time he was biting down. I restored the tooth with a composite filling. Now, 
The question remains, should all existing amalgam fillings be removed? We know the dental amalgam constantly releases small amounts of mercury and that the material can possibly make a tooth crack. But let's put things together. The WHO estimates that 0.017 mg of mercury per day gets released from a normal amalgam filling. The more fillings, the bigger the mercury exposure. When removing an amalgam filling though, it is an estimated 4 mg that gets released. That is more than 200 times the amount. So removing the amalgam filling causes a sudden explosive exposure to mercury because of the heat developed when drilling it out. And this is where it's very important to have a safe removal protocol in place to protect the patient but also the nurse and the dentist. Let me show you how we are implementing this protocol when removing amalgam. So this is a vacuum with a mercury filter very strong vacuum that sits over the top of the patient. I wear a mask myself and protective equipment. This is a red band handpiece with a special burr, not a turbine, so not a super high speed. The rubber dam with a latex free rubber dam is in place and an oxygen supply for the patient. When we start, we use copious water for cooling, that's very important to keep it cool and a high volume suction gets rid of all the mercury vapor. So what are the replacement options? For small to medium sized amalgam fillings, they can be replaced with composite fillings or ceramic inlays. For larger sized amalgam fillings, we need to use a crown for better stability. A crown sits over the tooth like a thimble sits on a finger. A structurally weaker tooth is much better supported by a crown. I hope you enjoyed this video and it shed some light on dental amalgam fillings. You will find more videos on important dental issues on my website. I also offer video consultations for clients who feel the need to discuss personal dental issues from the comfort of their home. So please visit me on dentaldecoded.com. Thank you for watching.